We're not changing how artists live, but we're changing how they're going to live in the future. It allows them the ability to start to create generational wealth, which has never been an option for most artists now, but for the future, it will start to be an option for them. View and Far is a one-stop destination for exceptional Web3 experiences, whether that's NFTs, gaming, DeFi, or other applications, period. And we're kind of one of the first projects that's actually being able to cross-pollinate people who are NFT uh, enthusiasts, but also DeFi degens, because we've got tokenized approach to our marketplace. We're actually giving fees back to users when they purchase NFTs. So um, that's kind of at a high level what we're doing at View and Far. I'm Paj Tarsha, I'm one of the co-founders of Few and Far. And I'm Carissa Winnett, and I'm the VP of Operations of Few and Far. Lifetime uh, self-taught designer and developer. I started a, a Web2 gaming company, evolved it to a Web3 play-to-earn gaming company on an Algorand, have built on a number of layer ones. And in my background, like a lot of people, I was investing in Bitcoin. I was more kind of like on the retail side. What really brought me in was the summer of DeFi when we had smart contract computing platforms. And I had a Web2 business at the time, and that really was the point where I saw the potential to actually take what we were doing to, to, to the next level um, with smart contracts. So really the DeFi aspect is sort of what pulled me into it more than anything else. I had a lot of friends who were flipping Bitcoin and I really didn't understand any of that stuff to be fully transparent. And I thought if they can figure it out, there's literally nothing stopping me from figuring this out. So I was taking all these courses and doing all this research. But what I loved about the blockchain specifically was how organized everything was, how it builds on itself. I thought this is something really unique. And so I started to create business models with mundane businesses on how I could put them in Web3, how I could build on a blockchain. And I got kind of obsessed with it and then I thought, if I could get into it and really just get my hands dirty and learn on like boots on the ground, I can probably take this world by storm. And I just got really lucky. I applied to a job and they hired me. <laughs> and I just kind of got thrown into the fire. And in two years, I went from an executive assistant, chief of staff, director of ops to VP of ops. It gave me an opportunity to work with really interesting NFT projects, but I also before that worked with a lot of huge entertainment companies. So I had a background in that. So I had a really good idea of what artists in the space want and what we need and the utility that they're looking for. She comes from a background of, of you know major brands and IP. We wanted to bring her on to really kind of scale us up. At Few and Far, what we're doing is really interesting with this whole drama around NFT royalties and them being optional. So there's this whole crazy battle about uh, having optional royalties and this kind of race to the bottom where marketplaces are coming in and undercutting and basically, pardon my French, they're screwing over creators. And so with Few and Far and Nears Flexible Smart Contracts, we're developing a really interesting approach where creators actually have the tools to enforce royalties at the smart contract level. So we can do interesting stuff like um, have dynamic royalties where they can evolve over time. A creator can decide what marketplaces their NFTs can or cannot be listed on, et cetera. And Nier's got this amazing smart contract architecture that's like really flexible and dynamic that enables us to do that. In the entertainment industry, you have to chase people down to get your royalties. It's not something simple that happens. You don't just get a check every month. A lot of people think that, but there's actually specific people that chase down royalties for actors and actresses and singers and things of that nature. And if you're a, an independent artist who's sold their song on a huge soundtrack, you have to hire someone to chase those royalties and you don't always have the money. So if we can put it in an NFT and wrap that and make sure that code is in that smart contract, that person no longer has to worry whether or not they're gonna get that check or pay someone to go find that for them. We're solving a huge problem that I think is going to change the first layer, which is entertainment, and then later on the business world as, as a whole. So Nier's approach, um, they've really looked at things from a UX perspective. Nier's got these like amazing web wallets that are like super easy to onboard users with, where you can actually have like a almost like a Twitter handle. So that like onboarding perspective from a UX um, point of view is really why we were focused on building on Near first. You know, I think we're gonna be in kind of like a multi-chain, omni-chain universe, but Near from a blockchain perspective is where we are most confident kind of launching our platform and, and starting to uh, plant the seeds there. You know, the challenge has been, how do we get the next 1 billion users to Web3? 
And a billion sounds like a lot, but it's really not once you get more people in the ecosystem. And especially because it's so easy, yeah. it's one step really, you just use your email address. I think that's the kind of the difference in terms of what we're doing opposed to what everyone else is doing, is they have multiple steps and that scares people. But when you simplify it and you make it less scary and you educate people on, on what we're doing, I think one billion is, uh, is small in comparison to what I actually yeah. think we're gonna be able to do.